Hello, we welcome you to this Sunday, October 4th service, which is World Communion Sunday. And we will be celebrating communion this morning, so if you want to take a little time as you sing along with the hymns and go get some juice, coffee, tea, maybe a little bit of bread or crackers, whatever you choose to use to join us in communion and have it ready. Uh, that is a definite joy for this morning, and we hope that you are celebrating other joys as you are at home. We miss you, but we're so glad that you can be with us in this service. Uh, we do have prayers, and our secretary Brenda has most wonderfully put them in a list for us for the bulletin, so I will read down the list of names, and you can add your prayers to this, and we'll say a word of prayer at the end. We pray for Robin, James, David and Ruth, Beverly, Debbie, Beth, Joe, Anna, Helen, Gloria, Linda, Bill, Beth, Sherry, Pat, Amy, Gloria, Phyllis, Jessica and family, Cal, Jean, John, and Kelly. We also pray for our military and their families. We pray for the leaders of our nation. And we pray for the world. We pray for Kangaroo, PCEA, as we know they pray for us, and we pray for our session during this time. So again, I hope you uh, are settled in and ready for this worship service and our time of communion together. Let us pray. Most gracious God, thank you that we can be together even when we cannot see each other. Thank you for the people who worked to put this service together. Thank you for our church and our church family. We lift up our joy of World Communion Sunday and we lift up our prayers for healing of the soul, the mind, and the body. In thy son's name we pray. Amen. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. Let us pray to prepare us for worship, followed by the call to worship. And please join me as we read this together. Jesus, Holy Redeemer, you come and seek us in forest, fields, farms, cities, islands, and mountaintops. Come and be with us today as your faithful people celebrate your Holy Communion on every continent and from the four corners of the earth. The heavens are telling the glory of God. The skies proclaim the Creator's work. They have no speech, they use no words, yet their witness goes out through all the earth. Let us join the chorus of creation. Let us raise our voices in resounding praise. May the words of our mouths and the songs of our hearts be pleasing to the Lord.
Let us pray the prayer of confession together. God of the covenant, long ago you gave us the law to guide us in the ways of righteousness. When we wandered, you called prophets to beckon us toward faithfulness. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son to heal our brokenness and draw us close to you. But time and time again, we reject your gift of grace. We bow before the false gods of our world and forget your command to serve the least of these. We fill our days with self-serving agendas or trivial tasks and neglect to nurture our relationship with you. Forgive us, Lord. Come to us again, we pray, and set us on right paths. Root out habits that separate us from you and sow within us seeds of mercy and love so that we might produce the fruits of your kingdom. Who is able to condemn? Only Christ, Christ who died for us, who rose for us, who reigns at God's right hand and prays for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, as the forgiven and reconciled children of God, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the time of our offering, uh, we have different ways that we can give now in this time when we're separated from each other by all the distancing and online worship. Uh, you can mail your offerings, your tithes here at First Presbyterian Church, 1414 Myers Avenue, Dunbar, West Virginia, 25064. You can also drop uh, your offerings off in the mail slot at the red doors at the, uh, at the front of the church as well. Now let us bring an offering to the Lord our God.
thing that is to know. As we're going through our daily lives, his, his promise and His love can push us through a lot of things in life that are difficult. Um, I'm going to show you something that I think is sort of neat. First of all, you know, if you, a brand new penny is real shiny. This is a, a, a newer penny and it's very shiny and pretty. And then as, as new pennies are spent and they pass hands and they fall on the floor and they roll into the refrigerator and into the car and onto the, in the water, they get pretty messed up. And so when they get messed up, they become very dark like this because dirt is just sort of covering them up. Well, I'm going to throw these in here. And what, the, what I want you to understand is because of Jesus and all of our sins in life are forgiven. Um, we get, when, when, we're, when we have take communion, we're getting our heart renewed and our spirit renewed, and we're just there to thank Jesus for all he's given us. Now look at these pennies. Just like dumping them in here, they're new. They're shiny. They're brand new. They look like it. And that's what's so wonderful with us because the same thing happens when we ask Jesus to forgive our sins. So now we come to the table. This is when we give thanks. Um, Jesus said these words to his disciples the night before he died on the cross for our sins. He said, this is my body broken for you. And then he poured wine into the cups and said, this is my blood poured out for you. Eat this bread and drink this wine and do it in remembrance of me. So we'll gather here this morning and we're going to thank Jesus for taking away our sins and for creating our, our hearts to be clean and new. Thank you, Jesus. scripture lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 20 through through 26. The word of the Lord. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Please pray with me. God, our Father, we pray that you would stir your spirit within us and among us, that we may have the eyes to see and the ears to hear your will and your way for us this day. It's in the strong name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. A number of years ago, my friend Jim Erb made some observations about this passage and about Jesus' words as he institutes the, the Lord's Supper. And I want to share those thoughts with you, at least my version of those thoughts. Four things. We read in the Gospels that Jesus, as they were eating, he took bread, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. That essentially is what Jesus does with us. We are to be the bread of life in this time and place. Jesus said, I am the bread of life, but as we are Jesus' presence in this world, if we follow Christ, we are his presence, his hands, his feet, his voice, his presence in this world. So we are too to fulfill that role of the bread of life as being the presence of Christ and Christ's body here in this, in this world. And in that light, this is what happens with us as God moves close, as we move close to God, He takes us, first of all, but He only does so as we allow Him. In other words, we give ourselves to Him so that He takes us into His fellowship, into His heart, into His work. He takes us. And that's the key. It is being given to Christ, being given to, him, to the person of Christ. I see people in our, in our society who will sometimes admire Jesus, sometimes they'll admire his teachings. People will appreciate the wisdom, the deep wisdom of New Testament philosophy, 
on which uh, really the principles of our American culture are based in their, in their foundations. Christian philosophy, and many then went beyond that to deep, steep themselves in Christian theology in the early part of our history, but they may or may not embrace Jesus himself. That is the key uh, to embrace the Lord Jesus Christ. I think there's a book out that I have not read this one, but I, I understand the theme of the book, I'm Not a Fan, and that is I'm Not a Fan of Jesus. It's not a negative about Jesus, but rather a positive. Don't stop short just being a fan of Jesus or Christian principles or Christian love and charity and giving, but become a person who has been taken by the Lord Jesus Christ into his heart, into his mission, into his kingdom. So first of all, he takes us. And as he took the bread and blessed it, he blesses us. As we enter into that relationship with Christ, we are blessed. You can see that very clearly if you see a person who's just suddenly come to Christ out of a life where they are lost or where they're in some sort of trouble or sorrow, and they come to Christ, and there's an ecstatic response often as they feel the blessing, perhaps for the first time in their lives, it's a sudden change this blessing. For others, it happens gradually, and they suddenly realize that they have been richly blessed. If we give ourselves into Christ's hands, if he takes us to himself, he then blesses us. He took bread, he blessed it, and then he broke it. And that is the other thing. Jesus breaks us. That doesn't sound like much fun, to be broken. But in this case, what Jesus does is he breaks our willfulness, he breaks our rebellion, he breaks the chains of sin and death, he breaks the things that hinder us and those things that weigh us down. He breaks them, he breaks us so that we can be useful in his work, working with him, him in us, we in him. Through it. He breaks us of those things. And then we are able to do his work. We are able to be a part of the transforming power of the Holy Spirit, active and at large in the world. Once he has taken us to himself, blessed us richly with his very presence and the Spirit of God in us, his Spirit living in us, the joy of that, the peace of all of that, the restoration, the healing, all that comes inwardly with that blessing. And then he breaks us as we allow him to. He breaks our rebellion, our willfulness, and he makes us fit for the, the kingdom of God and for his work. And then once that happens, he's able to give us. He gave them the bread, the bread. He took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it. After we have gone through a bit of a process, Jesus is able to give us away to others, to make a difference in the world, to be light in the world, salt of the earth, to be able to exercise the, the love and the grace of the kingdom of God. You have that opportunity. You have that ability to come to Christ and invite him to take you into his heart, into his kingdom, ever increasingly into his heart and kingdom, into his work, to be blessed richly with his presence, his healing, his restoration, his transformation, to break us of those things and to break the chains, the inner chains we have of sin and death, to break us of our rebellion, our willfulness, our stiff-necked kind of resistance and then to give us away to others. You have a role to play. Each of you has gifts and talents, and in fact, your particular gifts and talents are your job description as a member of God's kingdom. Your job description is written on your heart and your mind, in your physical self, in your gifts that God has given you, in the talents you have. When you see what they are, that is your job description. Maybe you're really good at being behind the scenes, serving needs of people, seeing needs of people, seeing needs of groups and serving them, whether it's hungry people, people who are discouraged, people who are poor, whatever it might be. That may be your gift. That may be your job description. It might be music. It might be teaching. It might be encouraging others. It might be in seeing things that need to be made right and working to make them right. Whatever it is, your particular constellation of gifts and talents that God has put in you are your job description. And once you are willing to be taken by Christ into his work, blessed, broken of your rebellious heart, the rebellion and the willfulness that runs through every one of our hearts, willing to be given away, then comes the great adventure of life. We uh, come to the communion table, this world communion table, with our brothers and sisters around the world this morning, and we do so 
knowing that there is a place there for each of us. Each of you has a seat at this table. And in fact, this table, this meal, is not complete without you. It is here at the table that we claim those promises, we claim that process of being taken, blessed, broken, and given away. It is here that we are claimed into that relationship, and into that promise that is life itself, that allows you to energize your gifts, your job description for life and life eternal. There's a place set for you at the table this morning. Come to the table. Please pray with me. God, our Father, we thank you that you want to take us to your heart, to yourself, into your love and your grace and your kingdom. You deeply want to bless us in all kinds of ways. And then you want to break us of the things that do us harm, that hinder us, that hurt us. And then you want to give us away in service, in love, and grace, in adventure to others. We thank you for that and pray that we would be claimed into that and reclaimed into that today as we gather around this table. In the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, friends, all that humbly put their trust in Christ and desire His help that they may lead a holy and righteous life, all that are truly sorry for their sins and would be delivered from the burden of them, all are invited and encouraged in His name to come to this sacrament. Let us then come in such a way that we may find refreshing and rest unto our souls, so that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the peace of Christ and the love of Christ, which passes all understanding, that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. And so now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus our Lord throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Let us then attend to and listen reverently to the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ as they are delivered by the Apostle Paul. Paul writes, I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, and after supper, he took the cup, and he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink ye all of it. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes. And so now I take these elements to be set apart by prayer and thanksgiving to the holy use for which he has appointed them. The bread, the body of Christ, take and eat. In his name. Jesus said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink ye all of it. Please pray with me. For God, who by the life and death and rising again of thy dear Son, has consecrated for us a new and living way into the holiest of all. Cleanse our minds, we pray, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, the drawing near to you with a pure and steadfast heart and conscience. We may receive these your gifts without sin, worthily magnify your holy name. And here we offer and present to you ourselves, our souls, and our bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice.
and we pray that you would mercifully accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as in fellowship with all the faithful in heaven and on earth, we pray that you would fulfill in us and all people the purpose of your redeeming love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be the glory and the praise both now and forevermore. God of new beginnings, you call us in unexpected ways, often disrupting our customary life to make pilgrimages of, of faith. As we go out into the week that lies ahead, may we hear your call and obey. We pray you sustain and strengthen us for whatever the days may bring. In the name of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.